Hello, my people. My name is Meacham. I'm your college counselor, and today we're talking about how much it costs to study in every country that's worth considering for you as an international student. All the numbers I'm going to give today include study costs, cost of living, and all the other extra stuff that one needs in order to study abroad. And we're also going to talk about some of the scholarship opportunities available in each destination. I'm going to be giving annual amounts in U.S. dollars because America created money. So let's get to it. Australia! I can't do a good Australian accent, so I'm not going to try for the rest of this paragraph. It ranges between $34,000 a year and about $53,000 a year. A significant portion of this cost is cost of living because the Australian government updated its requirements recently for student visas. You have to show $24,000 Australian dollars or about $17,000 real dollars in order to even get your visa. Scholarships are available in Australia, but they usually only cover about 20 to 30 percent of the tuition cost. But quick shout out for my Indian fans. I know there's a lot of you that watch this channel. There's a huge scholarship at the University of Sydney for Indian students specifically that basically covers all of the tuition expenses. So if you can cover your cost of living, definitely check that out. Canada. Canada has been in the news recently because a lot of universities in the Quebec province are going to see their prices rise next year. But even with those price hikes, those Canadian universities are not the most expensive options. Overall, the range is between about $20,000 and like $65,000. The prices vary wildly. It really depends on the major that you're gonna choose and also where you're going to be. The more you wanna be there, the more you gotta pay. University of Toronto, for example, sits at the high end of that limit, while a more affordable university in Newfoundland, like Memorial University, would be at the bottom end. Scholarships in Canada are available, but they are not at every university, and they usually only last one year. Germany. Germany is surprisingly one of the most affordable affordable destinations for international students because studies are free for everybody regardless of where you come from. That means you only have to cover your cost of living, which according to German immigrations is about a thousand euros per month. So we're talking about $13,000 a year. Italy. Italy is a fascinating case because it's one of the only countries I've ever seen where locals may actually pay more than international students. People from particularly poor countries I'm not making that up. That's literally what they call them. If you're from one of those countries, I'm sorry to inform you that you are particularly poor. People from those countries actually get to pay less for their tuition in Italy in public universities. There's a second list too of non-OECD countries, so those people will pay a middle rate in a lot of cases. So the range for public schools really works out to about $10,000 to $17,000 per year. Now there are private universities like Bocconi that will take that budget way higher, $30,000 a year year to cover your cost of living and tuition expenses at a top private university like that. Spain! Spanish universities will generally set you back about $17,000 a year at public institutions. At private institutions, that goes up to about $20,000 to all the way up to $35,000 a year. However, if you're an international student from one of Spain's former colonies, you can actually get a discount. It's Spain's way of saying sorry for taking all your gold. Private universities, on the other hand, could offer bigger scholarships. Check out IE University, which has up to 75% scholarships, although it is still the most expensive university in the country, so you should also check out the CEU San Pablo University. They can offer up to 100% tuition scholarships for qualified applicants, and a handful of public universities have scholarships too, like the University of Salamanca or Jaén. Okay, can you not? Like, do something else. <laughs> For about $15,000 a year, you can study in a French public university. Everybody in France pays the same, whether they're European citizens or not. The downside is that there are basically no programs in English. Hungary! Hungary has been quietly expanding its options into English language. The total cost ranges from about $8,000 a year to up to $20,000 a year, which makes Hungary an extremely affordable option. Cost of living over there could be as low as like $600 a month. And they can make it even better with their state-sponsored scholarship, the Stipendium Hungaricum. Almost every program in the country is covered by the Stipendium Hungaricum. Not only covers your tuition expenses, but it also gives you a stipend for your cost of living. So if you're looking for a full-ride scholarship, Hungary actually might be one of your best options. Czechia, formerly known as the Czech Republic and home to my great-grandmother. 
I think, pretty sure, we're not 100% sure, but pretty sure, Chechia, a lot like Hungary, has been expanding its options in English as well. Very low key, it's an affordable place to go. Studies are free if you want to study in Czech, but I mean, your odds of being able to learn that language good enough to be able to study in it are pretty low. But English options range between about $1,000 and $6,000 per year for studies. The cost of living is also very cheap, typically running about six to $800 a month, which gives us a range of about eight to $13,000 a year. So Chechia is a really good option if you're on a low budget. I'm dripping all over the place. It's so hot. Y'all don't know, but I'm still here. I'm still doing it for you. Sweden. Yeah. Let's start with our Nordic countries here with Sweden, mostly just because I love their website. It's so friendly. It's got emojis and it's like, yeah, we know some things are expensive, but look, some of the other ones aren't. Sweden is free if you have an EU passport or you're a citizen of the EEA, but otherwise you're looking at a pretty expensive range of about $20,000 to $45,000 per year. Denmark. Denmark is not only free if you have EU citizenship, but they actually pay you to study in the country. If you're not a European citizen though, you don't get paid to study there and you're gonna have to pay about $20,000 a year for your studies and your cost of living. I covered this before in my how to study in Denmark video, but one thing happened shortly after that video, which I'm sure is because I made that video. Like obviously the government of Denmark is keeping an eye on this channel. I'm sure they're one of my many subscribers. So now your options in English are a lot more limited. There are still some programs in international business, some engineering courses, a little bit of arts, and actually a lot of music programs. Norway. It ranges between about $20,000 a year for the cheapest majors, all the way up to like $60,000 a year for really expensive ones. But on the bright side, you can study things like Arctic adventure tourism, so if you've got a rich dad and you love the cold, go to Norway. Finland! No, not a Finland! Finland is free for EU citizens, but it does charge about seventeen dollars to $30,000 a year for other international students, depending on what you want to study. The United Kingdom. At its cheapest, studying in the UK at a smaller university like the University of Wales is going to cost you about $32,000 a year, but most of the time it's going to range between $40,000 and about $60,000 a year. Since leaving the EU, prices in the United Kingdom have only gone up. But even if you have a UK passport, you don't get that discount automatically. You actually have to live in the country for three full years. UK VI office that handles your visa process calls for about 13,000 pounds, which is like $17,000 in real money, just to show that you can afford to live there for a year. UK is really only a recommendable option if you're like filthy rich. There are scholarships, but a lot of times they only last one year and the few full rides that do exist are just really rare for undergraduate students. Students. I think that's all the countries. Um, I don't think I forgot like anything. The right. United States of America. I didn't save this one for last to make you watch the video longer because I know you won't anyway. I know I'm going to put chapters and you're going to skip to this part. So if you just got here and you ignored all the other countries, uh, you've already made a mistake. You should have gone back because there was a full ride scholarship in Hungary that you totally missed. It's time to talk about the United States of America and how much it costs to study there for real. The United States is the hardest system to explain because there are prices on websites, but those are not usually the price that you're going to pay at the end of the process. The United States makes you see one price and then they give you a different one depending on how much they like you. So public universities are usually forty to $60,000 a year. Private universities typically start out around $50,000 a year, but can go all the way up to like $90,000 a year, which is insane. There is no undergraduate degree that is worth $90,000 a year, but that's the sticker price. Price. That's the price they want you to pay, but the real price is going to be a lot lower. In practice, most universities, public and private, are going to have some kind of scholarship that they can give you, which is automatically awarded upon admission. The exact amount will vary depending on your profile, but the truth is you can end up paying a lot less than what you see on the website. After considering merit-based awards, most of the time your average is going to be around $26,000 to $36,000 a year for a public university. Sometimes they'll even give you a scholarship that exonerates you from paying the extra out-of-state rate. I covered a few of those options in a video I made a while back about out-of-state tuition waivers for international students so that you can pay the same price as residents do. Some of those offers may not be around anymore, but you know, do your own research, take a look at the list, maybe you'll see some that interest you. Private universities in the U.S. typically give a scholarship to everybody that applies. For example, my student Christina 
Christina applied to Pace University. Pace University has a total cost of attendance of about $72,000. She got a $36,000 a year scholarship, good for four years. So it's like half the listed price. I mean, how do you go from $72,000 to $36,000. So the only way to find out what you really gotta pay at the end is to apply and see what happens and then compare your offers. The average person is gonna end up paying between thirty dollars to $40,000 a year to study in the United States as an international student. If you're at like $25,000 a year, your options are there. They're limited, but they're there. I got students from Peru studying in Texas Tech for less than that, or in Florida International University with a good SAT score, or even like Augustana a college, a private university that gives out some really big fat scholarships upon admission. But what if you don't have $25,000 a year to spend for four years to study in the United States? Now I know that a lot of the people watching this channel come from particularly poor countries and a lot of you need huge amounts of financial aid. Most of you are searching for full ride scholarships and I think we need to have an honest talk about how difficult that is and what it means for your opportunities. If you cannot cover even your cost of living, like if you have less than $20,000 a year to spend on your education, you're basically stuck looking for full ride scholarships. Now full ride scholarships can be available at some private universities. For example, Illinois Tech has a few that they can give out every year. But most of the time you're going to get this through financial aid for international students. There are only about 50 universities in the United States that promise to meet 100% of demonstrated financial need for international students. They're need aware universities, which means that the more you need, the harder it's going to be to get in. A lot of these smaller liberal arts colleges just don't have the money to provide a ton of full rides for international students. So that kind of leaves us with just a handful of options, which are your Ivy League schools, the most prestigious universities on the planet. They have billions of dollars in their endowments and they're able to provide full ride scholarships to everybody. They don't, but they could. But of course, everybody wants a free ride, you know, everybody wants a full ride scholarship. So there's thousands of applicants just like yourself applying to these universities and only about 2% of students are going to get that full ride scholarship. So even if you are an amazing student, and I'm sure you are, you're competing against a ton of other amazing students. I don't want to be discouraging. I hate to be negative on this channel. Like I always want to inspire people to try new things and to give, you know, studying abroad a chance. But at the same time, you have to be realistic with your circumstances. Like if you only have $5,000 a year, it might be smarter to save up for a year or two, go to college at Hungary with a stipend, for example, from the government and, and get a great education in a well-developed country for a fraction of the price. It's going to be a lot easier to do that than it is to do what you're trying to do in the United States. Don't put all your eggs in the one basket of Ivy League universities. It's totally fine to try. I encourage you to do that. But you also need to be realistic with yourself. If you don't have perfect grades and amazing SAT scores and like an incredible amount of extracurricular activities, your application is going to go straight to the garbage. Even if it is possible for you, I would still encourage you to have a plan B. Pretty much everybody we work with in SCORE, for example, who applies to these Ivy League schools is also going to apply to a public university in Spain where they can work and pay for their studies because that's a viable option and it's much easier to get into. If you study hard and get good grades on those tests, you're in. It's not like the US where it's almost like a random chance between thousands of amazing candidates. The goal here is to help you make good decisions so that you can go study abroad and get a better education and make a better future for yourself. And if all you do is focus on the hardest way to do that, which is Ivy League universities, full ride scholarships, then you're probably going to fail. Most people will fail. Statistically speaking, 98% of you will fail. I don't want you to be that 98%. I want you to be smarter than that. I want you to consider some of these other options that we've talked about today and make a plan for how you might be able to save up some money or, you know, work while you study or learn another language so you can get access to cheaper education. Like there are opportunities for you if you're willing to put in the work to get them. If I missed a country that you are interested in, please leave it in the comments below and let me know because we can talk about it over there. There are more countries. It turns out there's like 190 some countries out there and thank you for watching this video i really appreciate your patronage and it's wonderful to have you here and if you like this stuff and you want to learn more about studying abroad subscribe to the channel have a great day